Welcome to Feature Friday. This is the series where we show you how to use some of the coolest features inside of Ecamm Live. I'm Doc Rock, your community manager, and today I'm going to show you how to use the camera effects panel. The camera effects panel can come in extremely handy when you're trying to make that last little minor adjustments to your setups, frame things properly with certain overlays, and adjust your picture so you can get a fantastic look. We're going to dive in real quick and I'm going to show you how to use the camera effects panel. Let's take a look. Here we are inside of Ecamm Live and as you can see, my camera effects window is right here. Let's suppose your camera effects window was missing. Don't panic, don't panic. Just go up to the menu section, drop down, and you'll see in alphabetical order, the second one is camera effects panel. Now let's say you're just like me and you're a keyboard guy. Command semicolon. Also pops open the camera effects panel. And then the last one in your master window, you'll see these buttons here along the side if you press this magic wand, just like Harry Potter, camera window, window kiss, kiss, affect the kiss, boom. There's your camera window. Now let's take a look at some of the features inside the camera window. Our first selection you see is the ability to select your camera. I have here my standard cam link, which you're watching. I also have here what would be my overhead camera, my iPhone 8. And then this is where you would adjust guest. If you had guests come in and you wanted to make adjustments there, I'll go back to my cam link. The adjustments I make here work on whichever camera you pick. So you can just sort of interchange them according to various cameras. Okay. The first box here, I'll hit the disclosure triangle and you'll see where we have blue screen and green screen. I don't have a blue screen or green screen. I don't use them, but because of the purple, we can kind of fake it with the blue. I'm gonna adjust my fade level here to all the way so you can see the effects as I work on them. Now, this is where you select your backdrop. The built-in images are things like beach or brick wall or a castle, but I dragged down in from my desktop, I dragged in an image of a stormtrooper. It's kind of weird. There you go. I dragged them in a stormtrooper because with a stormtrooper, you can't miss. Okay, yeah, that was corny. <laughs> also, I can select transparent, which will pull images from my backgrounds here in overlays. So you see this movie I have here, and that's how you get a moving background or a still image or something like, you know, Ecamm branded image. I can pull those by using the transparent function. I could also select on the blur and blur the background accordingly. So let me take these two off and pull off the transparent and you'll see my stormtrooper image is blurry, not blurry, blurry, not blurry. So you can make adjustments there. So let's go ahead and get rid of that because it's driving me insane. Let's <laughs> close this so it just makes it less confusing. That's what's really cool about these disclosure triangles. I'm gonna select the next one, which is zoom and pan. This will allow me to make adjustments in my camera. So here I'll select and you'll see a big head dock. I can scroll this around, make some room, say maybe I wanna adjust this to fit an overlay a particular way. I could do something like this and put myself to a side and give myself lots of real estate over here for a presentation. So I'll turn that off real quick. I'll show you in the case of like the overhead shot by using the zoom and pan, I can make my desk look neater than it really is. So if I come over here and select my overhead shot, it looks nice and neat because I have it cropped in. I can make little minor adjustments here and there and that's how you would do that. Switching back to me now, zoom and pan comes in really handy when you're trying to make yourself or a guest fit properly into an overlay and they don't quite fit. That's how you make those minor adjustments. I'm gonna close this and we'll come down to picture settings. In picture settings, you're gonna make changes to your brightness. You can go brighter, you can go darker, you can make changes to color temperature. Blue makes your image looks more cool. And then yellow makes your image looks more warm. Looks. You can adjust that accordingly. Now, a lot of capture cards, especially those 20 and 15, $30 capture cards from Amazon, they'll come with a heavily magenta or green tint. All you do is slide this the opposite way to kind of balance that out. 
It's just something about the nature of inexpensive capture cards and some webcams. You can adjust their built-in tint by adjusting the tint here. Saturation, allow me to go hyper saturation like it's the 80s, max headroom. Or I could go down to do a Humphrey Bogart and kick it in the unsaturated image or somewhere in the middle if I'm trying to get like a 1970s mod squad look, right? So you can do that there. Gamma, think of gamma as contrast. A little bit more contrast, a little bit less contrast. You can make these adjustments accordingly. Now, I wanna bring something to your attention. You wanna do this as little as possible. A little goes a long way. Think of it as a uh, habanero sauce or ghost pepper. A little bit goes a long way. You want your camera to look as tight as possible from the camera settings itself and then use these to make the minor adjustments. Because what I'm gonna show you next, if your white balance is off, if your exposure is off, your picture will go crazy real quick using LUTs. Now LUTs are lookup table. I'm gonna show you a couple real quick. We do have a full video from the fantastic Mr. Fox, Mr. Marshall Fox. We have a video that explains it in much more detail. I will link that. You should know before you use a LUT, you wanna make sure that you're properly exposed because it can go south real quick. By clicking onto this select LUT, it's gonna open up something that lets me see what's on my computer. So I'm gonna pick something like this drama club LUT. And as you can see, there's a drama club LUT. It looks kind of weird, because basically it says take a color and make it look like this color. That's what a LUT is, look up table. But you just pull this down, make it a little bit less drastic, and you can get a fairly decent look. I'll show you something a little more cinematic. I'll press this last one here, and it's really cinematic. Like, it's like a flat film. But with a couple of minor adjustments, you can get a pretty decent look by adjusting these LUTs. Again, if you wanna learn more, watch the Marshall Fox video, you'll come out thinking you're Martin Scorsese. I will pop that bad boy off and I'll close this out of the way and let's take one more look at camera options. Okay, so if you go to use virtual camera and say you're using this in a software like WebEx or Zoom or something and your audience tells you that your reading is backwards, you would just press this and it will flip. Now, many of these software will show it to you backwards on purpose because they're trying to help you with the left hand, right hand recall because it's opposite in camera. So they think they're doing you a favor. To me, it's more confusing, but I've been on camera since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Next you would do is check out black and white. That it allows you to have a full on Humphrey Bogart look, something a little film noir, you know, uh, frankly, Scarlet Ma'am, that kind of thing. And then lastly, if you're using an extra display, something that's mounted, you know, upside down, you could use the Batman look and that's there for that. A lot of times it has to do with teleprompters. And then of course there is the interlace, which for most of us, webcam, mirrorless and DSLR people won't affect us. Some of you folks that are dealing with older camcorders, you might need the de interlace button. And then my all time favorite, if you go to create a new scene, and your computer is selecting the wrong camera, just come over here, select the camera you want, in my case, CamLink 4K, and then just press default camera. By selecting default camera, every time you make a new scene, this will be the camera that shows up and not something like your built-in or some other camera that you don't wanna see. Camera effects panel can really, really polish up your settings and just give you that perfect image, again, that Genesis Qua. Thank you guys for watching another Feature Friday. Again, I am your community manager, Doc Rock. If you have another Feature Friday video that you would like to see, by all means, drop that in the comment section below and we'll do our best to get that creative for you. And don't forget to press the subscribe button, press the like button and ring the bell because there's many, many more videos to come for you, for you and Ecamm fam, because we wanna make sure your Ecamm experience is the absolute bomb. Now, Watch the video that comes up on screen next. <laughs>